As it's me, it's Queen Osset Haru, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. All right, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and pass it on to someone else who may like it as well. All right, guys, so today we're going to talk a little bit about tarot because I did a video a couple weeks ago where I talked about choosing your first tarot deck, and since then, I've gotten a lot of messages and one of them has come in time and time again. So today I wanted to try to clear this up. The question is, why do people have a hard time learning tarot? Now, some people learn tarot pretty effortlessly. Some people have to put in a lot of effort and some people never get it. Seriously, they just never get it. Over the years, I've, um, I've, especially when I was learning, when I was learning in like the 1990s, I came across a lot of witches, a lot of priestesses, a lot of readers, a lot of people who just wanted to learn how to read tarot. Some of them just are tarot collectors. They just collect decks. And out of the people that I came across, some of us got it and moved on to be readers, and some of us did not. And this is what I noticed about the ones that did not. And I'm telling you this today because if you're trying to learn tarot, you need to stay away from or you need to do these things to help you in your, in your process. One of the things that keeps people from learning tarot is that they just don't have a talent for it. Everybody doesn't have a talent for everything. I can't sing, for example. I want to sing, but I can't. When I try, it just doesn't sound good. <laughs> I do it anyway, but it doesn't sound good. So that's what happens with some people. They want to know tarot. They want to read tarot. They love the cards. They think the pictures are beautiful, but they don't have the talent for it. Everything is not for everybody. I don't have a talent for singing. Somebody else might not have a talent for cooking. It's not that they're a horrible person. That's just not their talent. Some people are talented with a different form of divination. Maybe the cards aren't right for them. Maybe they need to work with oracle cards instead. Maybe they need to work with bones, shells, crystals, crystal balls. There's all kinds of ways of doing divination other than using tarot cards. So some of the people I've noticed over the years, it just wasn't their thing. Nowadays, everybody goes to Amazon, buys a tarot deck, reads the guidebook that comes with the deck, and then think that they can read. And it's a lot more to it than that. So I think that some of them just don't have, they just don't have it, it's just not there. And let's talk a little bit further about what you need for it to be there, you know? Well, first of all, you need the, the innate talent, the, divin, the, divin, the, the talent of divination is what they call that, the ability to divine. So you either have that or you don't. It's like you're an empath or you're not. You're an intuitive or you're not. You're a singer or you're not, you know. You have this particular passion or you don't. It's there or it's not. But also, I think some people don't study the cards. You can't read the guidebook and think that you're going to be able to give readings. Not to say the guidebook isn't useful because it is. But think about it like this. This is like trying to use WebMD to do heart surgery on yourself. That's the equivalent or trying to rebuild your car's engine with nothing but the manual from the factory. You see, you got some help, you know, the, the, yeah, you know, you got the, the manual is good, you know, but it's not going to help you do open heart surgery on yourself. Okay. It's going to give you some information. It's going to be helpful in a lot of ways, but in order to do that, you're going to need a lot more education and a lot more practice. Okay. So to me, that's one of the biggest problems that comes. People don't study. They don't study anything about tarot. So you don't study the cards. They don't study the symbols. And I'm like, this is all about symbolism. It's all about history. It's all about understanding how the cards go together. Because when three cards come together, it may not mean the same thing as when you get one card by itself. 
Tarot is complicated. <laughs> That's why oracle, I always recommend oracle cards to people because tarot is really, really complicated. But oracle cards are really easy because they are designed to just be used with the book and no other material. Tarot, you really need to understand symbolism and you really need to study the cards. You need to understand when you see the high priestess come up and it's next to the death card, what does that mean? What does it mean when they come up by themselves? What does it mean when there's a third card added to it? You really have to study, and a lot of people don't study. They don't study anything. All they do is use their guidebook, and that's just erroneous. You need to know what the symbol of the pomegranate, for example, stands for. You see the, the high priestess holding a pomegranate. What does that mean? It means something. It Generally, the pomegranate, a lot of people say that it means wisdom. And most of these symbols are old symbols, so they go back in time. So if you learn the symbols, whenever you see it on a card, you know exactly what it means in the reading. Another thing that people do, they buy the wrong deck. I have met so many people who wanted to learn tarot, but are not tarot readers currently because they bought the wrong deck. I told them, get the Rider Waite Smith. It's the easiest one to learn on. The tarot is based off of two decks. There are two decks that all decks are based off of, basically. The Rider Way Smith and the Toth Tarot. Every deck you see is modeled after, in general, one of these decks. So it will behoove you to learn the easy ones first. The Rider Way Smith is the easiest one to learn on. Then the Toth deck. If you want to, some people don't really vibe with the top deck, but for education purposes, it is good to learn, at least look at, at least read up on the top deck. Because like I said, any deck you come across is going to be based off of these two decks. If you pick a deck just because it's pretty, because you like the pictures on it, nine times out of ten, you may never learn how to read that deck. And you may, if you do learn that one deck, you might be stuck and confused with other decks because, like I said, there's nuances to the deck. So if you learn the original, you'll be able to read any other deck. But so many people go out to Amazon, see these beautiful decks, and there are some really beautiful decks, and they pick one of them instead of getting a teaching tool. So then they're stuck and they really can't figure it out, or they just figure out that one deck and they can't read other ones. That's why when I train priestesses, I train them on the Rider Waite Smith deck because I know that when they're done with my class, they can go out there and read anything that they want. So stay away from those beautiful decks. <laughs> I know that sounds strange to say for me because I have a collection of like three or 400 beautiful decks, but when you're learning, I say learn with the easy deck, then build you a nice little tarot collection because then you'll be able to read all those beautiful decks. Otherwise, you're going to be tripped up in a lot of cases. Likewise, some people can't read tarot because their third eye is not open. If your third eye or your crown chakra is not open, you're not going to be able to read. The third eye and the crown chakra are the areas where you, you open. Those, those energy centers open up and that's how you're able to divine. To be able to divine, you need to do two things. Pick the right cards and then be able to interpret the cards. So if I'm talking to somebody and I can't um, connect with their energy through my crown chakra, I'm not going to get the right cards. And if I don't get the right cards, it doesn't matter because anything I tell them is not going to be right. So their third eye and the crown chakra need to be open and healthy. And the only way to do that is through meditation. I've known plenty of people who had the right deck, studied their behind off, and could never get the right cards. And that's what it was. They didn't do enough inner work to open up their third eye and their crown chakra. So they can't connect with the other person. Some of them can't even read themselves. 
because they aren't open enough to be able to see the information, to be able to intuit the information, to be able to feel the information. Okay? So if you're having a problem learning tarot, it could be one or all of these things is causing you an issue. So look back, look and see, do I have the right deck? Have I studied enough? There's lots of stuff out there. I would recommend Mary Kay Greer is her name. She has a lot of great books on tarot. When I was first learning, I read her books and I really got a lot out of her books. Not only does she explain the interpretations, but she explains the cards in the upright and the reverse and what the symbols mean. So I liked her work, but there is others, but that's the one I usually recommend and that's the one I use when I train priestesses. I use the books by Mary K. Greer. So ask yourself, have you studied enough? Do you understand what the symbols mean? Is your third eye open? Is your crown chakra open? Is this something that you have a knack for? Is this something you're meant to do or are you just trying to make a couple of dollars? Because a lot of people, I'm clear, are just trying to get paid. And it's like, I do believe, I don't have a problem with people getting paid for their talent. I think you should get paid regardless of what your talent is. But if you don't have a talent or if you just want to do this because it's easy money, that's not good because it's not easy money. <laughs> it may look that way, but being a reader is a lot of responsibility. People are coming to you because they want you to help them. They want you to clear up things. And it's a lot of responsibility. It's not just you. It's not like you just create a product and slap it out there. This is your, in a lot of ways, you're almost like a therapist. You know, you're almost like, in a lot of ways, you're, you're really helping the person to figure out their life and to move forward. So it's not just a couple bucks, you know, it's really much more serious than that. So I think that a lot of people, that's where they get it twisted. When I first started reading, I read for six years before I charged a dime because I needed to be certain that I was on, I was on point. I read for free for six years. I would go on Pal Talk, I would open up a room, and I would just read people back to back to back to back to back. And that's how I built up my muscles. I did meditations, I studied, I read things, I learned the cards. I read myself every single day just to see what I got, where it was, what it meant. And at the end of the day, I would write down what happened that day and how did it correspond or didn't correspond with my cards. And I did this for six years. So, like I said before, it takes time. These kind of things take time. So if you're in this process and you're doing these things, keep going. Because eventually, you'll be really good. But give yourself time to get good. It's like any other skill. You have to learn it. A doctor can't. You know, a, a doctor-to-be can't do surgery on the first day of medical school. And neither can you. <laughs> so if you're trying to learn this, give yourself some time. You'll be able to get it in a lot of cases. And if it's something you don't have a talent for and you figure that out, try using other forms of divination. Get a crystal ball and try that. Get some oracle cards and try those. A lot of people have a lot of success with oracle cards because they're designed for you to use them directly with the book. You don't have to memorize anything. I memorize my oracle cards because I use them over and over and over again, but you don't have to. They're designed to go with the book. They're designed for you not to need any further information. So that could be something as well. All right, guys, it's time for me to get going. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and pass it on to someone else who is thinking about learning tarot or who is currently learning tarot or who's just, just curious about tarot. All right, guys. And underneath this video will be all the information that you need to get in contact with me. Okay? See you later.